In this video, I test this old Dell PowerEdge R930 with 96 CPU cores in some rendering workloads to see if this can still be a viable option for rendering 3D projects. I'm in the room with the render farm, which a lot of you have seen that already. Here are the new servers. It's pretty dark in here, but uh, there's two of them here. The one on top, that's an R730 XD, and this big one on the bottom is the quad socket CPU uh, render machine, and that's what we're gonna be testing in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it up just so you can hear it. Okay, here are the system specs for the server. This is a Dell PowerEdge R930 server with uh, four sockets, and all four sockets are populated with Intel Xeon E7-8890 version 4, which means this thing has 96 cores and 192 threads total. It currently has 256 gigabytes of RAM and um, quad 1100 watt power supplies, although it's only running on two of those. And the operating system is installed on an SAS SSD. So here I remoted into the R930 with remote desktop app, just like you could use on uh, Windows 10 Pro. Here you can see all 192 threads on uh, task manager here. And then I'm just gonna run through some Cinebench tests and I'll compare these results to my desktop later. I have a 7950X uh, AMD processor in my desktop. So it's a, it's a good comparison. Um, we can talk about system cost for each one of these. And I'll show you why these old servers might be a, a better value for things like rendering. Let's go ahead and run this. This one takes a really long time. So we'll have to sit here and wait. Um, you can see the graph load up on the right over here on task manager and that's it so um, the server gets anywhere from 7000 to 7300 points on Cinebench R15 I'll run that one more time and obviously it takes a few seconds to load the scene again but look how fast that goes you can see full usage we get uh, about 2.59 gigahertz on all threads, all 192 threads. And I'll run a few more just to get a little bit better of an average score. Okay, so you can see the scores kind of bounce around a lot. Uh, the lowest here was about 6,900, and the highest in this test was about 72, 73, so it varies a little bit. Um, I think this is such a light workload for it that the results are uh, varied quite a bit. So let's go up to a newer one. Um, let's load up Cinebench 20. So this one basically works the same as um, Cinebench R15. So I will run the multi-core again. And this one I have it uh, set to run a minimum of one minute. I want to make sure that the clock speed stays consistent and just gives me a little bit of extra time to kind of monitor things. So here you can see it's running the frame, all cores, all threads are at 100%, 2.59 gigahertz. And it just takes a few seconds to finish this entire frame. So when I'm running these, what, what you can think about is um, if your scene looks like that, this is, this is how fast you can produce frames with this machine. And this is only on CPUs, so there's no GPUs that are helping with this. Um, it's just a absolutely massive set of cores and more or less unlimited RAM available to those CPU cores. I think if you build these properly, these old CPU servers are um, still a really good value for rendering. Because as you can see, this thing just, it just, gets right through this test so fast, it's crazy. So we should only have another pass or two. But you can see we're keeping the 2.59 gigahertz clock speed. 
Um, everything looks like it ran just fine. So on this one, I got 19,878 points. And again, I'll compare that to some newer processors here in a bit. We'll go ahead and close that. And then I'll run uh, Cinebench 24. So the way this one works, um, it's actually a lot more similar to how Blender works now with cycles. So basically it doesn't run a tile for every thread anymore. It kind of combines all of the all of the processing power into bigger buckets, if you will. Um, so Cinebench 24 is cool because you can actually run a GPU test on this as well. Uh, we're not going to because this NVS won't even work on Cinebench anymore. So we're going to ignore the GPUs on this test, but um, let's go ahead and just run the CPU multi-core. I'll start it up. And again, it takes a little bit to load. It has to load all the textures and get the scene ready. Uh, so now it's actually running the test. We're sitting at about 2.51, 2.52 gigahertz, all core. And you can see the chart here, 100% utilized. Uh, so this test, I think, is definitely um, a much better test to compare it to modern hardware because uh, it's a lot heavier load than those older versions. Um, so this is the one I'll really key on to compare to the um, modern processors that I have. And this one does take quite a bit longer. It has a runtime of 10 minutes, and it'll go through multiple passes in that amount of time. So I'll just speed it up here, and I'll show you the score at the end. Okay, so it finally got done. It looks like it got one more run in right before the timer ran out, so it ran through all of that, but um, the server scored 1,726 points on uh, Cinebench 24. So now I'm gonna test my workstation so we can compare it to the server. Um, in my workstation, I have an AMD R9 7950X, which is 16 cores and 32 threads. I currently have 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM and a 1600 watt power supply. Windows is installed on a Gen 4 M2 NVMe solid state drive. Now I'm going to run through the same Cinebench tests on this machine. So we'll start with R15. And the scores I got on this test were between 5900 and 6048 points. Then we'll move on to Cinebench R20. For this one, I got uh, 13,986 to about 14,325 points. And finally, on Cinebench 24, I scored between 1987 and 2024 points on this test. And in the end of the video here, we'll put the results side by side, and then I'll talk about um, why these old CPU servers might have some value for rendering. And here are the results of the server and my desktop compared to each other. So for Cinebench R15, the server gets around 7,000 points, plus or minus a few hundred. Um, the 7950X CPU gets right around 6,000 points. So for that one, the R930 one. For Cinebench R20, um, just under 20,000 points on the server and just a little over 14,000 average on the 7950X. And finally, for um, Cinebench 24, the 7950X does win pretty convincingly on this test. And like I said, it's a heavier workload. I think modern hardware is going to do better on that. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I think the instruction sets that newer processors have help with this kind of more complex work, but um, the server got 1,726 points on Cinebench 24, and yeah, 2,000 for the 7950X on average. So definitely, depending on the workload, these old servers, um, they can keep up in some things. Some things they fall behind a little bit. But now we'll talk about the um, cost difference, and I'll explain why 
the server still has a possibility of maybe being a better choice. So as far as the price goes, I was able to get this entire server shipped for $1,400 off of eBay. Um, they cleaned it up really nice. I was pretty impressed by the quality of the used parts I got actually. Uh, but that was $1,400, the 7950X system, and keep in mind this is not including a GPU. That came out to $1,700 tonight when I made this edit, um, and that's just from a build on PC Part Picker. Obviously, there's a lot of ways you could change certain parts of the system, but that was just everything you would need for the computer to run. So basically, the server is still just a little bit cheaper, and the reason I think that this is kind of a key point is that the 7950X seems like a better idea, but if you're buying this just for a render worker, the possibilities of the server are basically limitless as far as RAM, and depending on the server you get, you might be able to add a whole bunch of GPUs, and in a desktop platform, you just can't do that very well. So for instance, the R930 itself can get up to, I think, 12 terabytes of RAM total. It has 96 RAM slots, and I'm only using eight of them. So you can get terabytes of RAM and all of the CPU cores have access to all of the RAM. So for rendering massive scenes or um, doing really complex CPU based simulations, this server just will do a lot more than any desktop. Um, the 7950X is limited to uh, about 192 gigs of RAM just because of the limited number of RAM slots and the motherboards and CPUs can't support a whole lot more than that anyway. So if desktop sized system RAM, then um, your only choice would be to use a server like this. So it depends on what you're doing. I'll do another video sometime showing the actual Blender benchmark scenes on this server. And I, I kind of tested them before and they are they are a lot slower than you'd expect from GPUs nowadays. But again, the limitless RAM is kind of a big deal. If you've ever tried to render on a GPU, you'll know that there's only so much you can do until you run out of VRAM. And these servers would completely get rid of that problem. That's kind of the value proposition. Um, I'll have examples down the road of the scenes that you need this much hardware for. And I really want to try some super, super heavy fluid simulations on this thing just to see what it can do. So watch for that eventually. Otherwise, that's it for now. I appreciate you being here and I'll see you in the next one.